How you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. I'm back from my week's vacation over in Canada, A eh? Always a great time. Uh, so I am going to start today by going to see trucks. I've got to go and find Mowers and Blowers new transport equipment picking fleet vehicle. I'm not going to get a van this time because I felt the van was just not practical. You can only seat two people. So I'd always have to come back and get my other car if I was gonna go somewhere with the family. So I need a truck that I can drive as a daily driver and pick on the go, you know? So I can leave on the fly whenever there's a pick situation. Uh, and I just couldn't do that with the van. So many times I would have to come back and get the van. By the time I go over there, sometimes I would get it, sometimes I wouldn't, it would be too late. So finding the right timing to pick stuff is vital. Also, the van was a little bit of an eyesore. You know what I mean? Uh, while it, you know, did well for me, I didn't have any problems with that van for the four years that I had it. I only put about, uh, I want to say like uh, 3,000 miles on it. Not a whole lot of miles at all, you know. So I'm going to go look for an F-150. I realized after looking at the listings that finding the red that I wanted was difficult. There's not too many of them out there. And I didn't want to find the base one. I wanted I wanted the Platinum or the King Ranch version, you know? And then I decided that I wasn't gonna look for that and I had to go to a half cab. But a half cab, you'd almost defeat the purpose of selling the van in the first place because you can't comfortably seat your family in the back. It's very cramped. Uh, yes, I'm a small guy and my family is not big, but nevertheless, if you had a chance to buy a crew cab, why not get the crew cab instead of the extended cab, right? So I have to stick to my guns. If I went down to a half cab, I would be settling, thus kind of negating the reason why I sold the van in the first place, you know? It has to be a crew cab. I guess it doesn't have to be red. I'd like red, but I, if I can't get it, what am I gonna do, right? So I might go to white. And uh, other than that, I really don't like uh, black or green or brown, which you see those. Uh, I might consider the blue that they have. That blue is pretty nice. So uh, we'll see. I'm gonna go for the next three days looking around with uh, my buddy Andy from Jericho because I'm gonna ca carry cash with me so that I could just, you know, if you have a, a bag of cash, that's a really good negotiating tool Whereas somebody would say, oh, you'd have to come back. Maybe I'll find another buyer for it. By the time that you come back, I would have sold it for the money that I wanted. But if I had cash right there, let's say a guy was going to sell it for uh, a 13.7, for instance. And I'd say, hey, look, I got 10 grand in cash with me right here, right now. I'll take it off your hands right now. Here's $10,000. A lot of people won't turn down $10,000 in their face, you know what I mean? They're done with it, they're, they're done with their truck, they can, they, they sell it, they don't have to show it to a bunch of yahoos and tire kickers that come after me, right? They don't have to worry about that stuff, they're done with it, it's off their hands. So that's why some people, if they see the cash flash in front of their face, they'll say, you'll get a better deal for sure. So uh, watch this video, uh, it, it is, uh, a compilation of three or four days of looking at trucks with my friend Andy and uh, hope you enjoy it. So this van does not have unlimited mileage. I pressed the button there to reset it when I got it about five miles later and uh, they allow 10, uh, 1,050 miles. So I think we're going to be about 10 or 15 miles over at 50 cents a mile. So going to have to pay a little extra. It's been a good van, it's just not a good van to drive in the snow. There we go, just returned it. As you can see, they got lots of vans here. They're called You Save Auto Rental here in Astoria, Queens, New York City. Now you guys may, uh, who have never been to New York City, you think that New York State uh, is New York City, but New York State is huge, all right? So here in Queens, New York City, you, you would, you could actually sort of see some of the skyscrapers over in Manhattan. Can you make it out? It's over in the distance there. But yeah, uh, New York City encompasses five boroughs. So Manhattan's the only one that you see with all the uh, buildings. 
But here in Astoria, this is what it looks like. Like a hellhole. That's why we live in Long Island. This is the first one we came to look at, and it's, uh, I forget the year. But anyway, the things that we found here are radiators leaking. It has evidence of a uh, bad antifreeze that were, was sludged in the radiator. The trim is gray here, right? But it's red here. Also the evidence of overspray and paint here. And it has a brand new drive shaft. Right there. You can see the sticker. And it's leaking some kind of thing there. Maybe it's condensation, I don't know. Engine sounds good though, but um, they want 14,000 for this. And it's got 106,000 miles on it. It is the two, uh, four, four door crew cab, which I like, has these uh, running boards. I put a OBD2 and it does have a P0420 code on it, which is catalytic converter sensor or something or other. Everything else seems okay. Uh, not too bad, but I'm not paying 14 for it. You know what I mean? And it's got rust underneath on the front here chips there i mean i'm i am just picking at it but you know you you want to look at all this stuff you know what i mean as you can see this is uh it's either a new bed or some kind of repair but as for rust it's not too bad you know for a new york car so this had like 106,000 miles on it i believe and also has an indicator of a left rear door ajar even though the door is not ajar but it's decent looking you know what i mean eh. 106, right? So we left that place and we're just driving on this boulevard where there's a shitload of cars. I know this is a dealership. Everything's gonna be super expensive. Look at this one. Boom! I have no business looking at these newer ones, but you know what? When in Rome, might as well. 2020 F-150, Super Crew, 5.5. You guys see a price. You know why you don't see a price? Because it's too expensive. That's why you don't see a price. It's 2020. I'm not going to be able to... I'm not going to buy a, a, a new truck for my hobby. You guys following what I'm saying? I'm not buying a new truck to use. I'm just buying a truck so I can pick shit. That's it. Now we're at our third bunch of places. Got a couple of... 2017, 2018 F-150s, Lariat. Again, uh, Andy from Jericho is telling me to come and look at these things, but honestly, these things are gonna be like 30 grand. I'm not planning on spending 30 grand for uh, my hobby truck. <laughs> Unless they can make a good deal. This is a 2000, 2005 uh, F-150 XL Triton. It's a 4.6 engine. It's got the... Uh, half cab with the suicide doors here's the condition it's got uh 200 and oh, i'm sorry a hundred and uh six yeah. thousand miles right yeah, right there guys original mileage original miles 106 and it just passed inspection and I uh, did the OBD2 connect, uh, diagnostic and it has no codes. Decent condition here. I wasn't gonna go for the half cab, but um, slim pickings. It's got some rust there, but it has, looked like it has under coating throughout. Engine sounds good, no knocks. Body straight. Has some rust parts here and there. New tires. And the under is pretty good. Leaf springs. 
There's a, uh, with the F4 and 150s, there's always a crack down there. That's where it buckles with the frame. That's okay, I got it. It has that cover and bed liner. Has okay. rust issues here. But it's to be expected. Other side is good too, straight. And he wants a 69. And the front looks like this. Has some rusty parts there. I think he sounds good. Okay, after seeing that, I'm here at Northport Motors. Let's see what they got over here. Hmm, GMC Cannon. Never considered that. This one's only 14,000. Looks in good condition. In Tacoma. I think a tractor would fit in here. I think it would fit. All you need is four feet length, 42 inches wide. Definitely wider than my uh, Ranger. Now I'm at the Huntington Auto Mall. They got a lot of trucks here. A lot of F-150s. They're all gonna be over 30,000, 25,000, I guarantee you. Yeah, they got lots of them, lots of them. I'll start over here. And this is what I'm talking about. This is like a 2015 and higher because it has the front lights. This is the red that I like. I don't really care for the black rims, but I do want a crew cab. But this is probably like 35, 40,000, which I'm not gonna buy for a work truck. You know what I mean? For a hobby truck. No business spending that kind of money on a truck to haul crap be too afraid to scratch up the bed so that's actually a 2019 and it's like 38,000 <laughs> everything there was like 20 uh, 30 something thousand uh, the only thing that was like 17 or 18 was this Dodge I'm not into Dodge because they've always had a reputation of rust in the wheel wells and I don't like the way the front looks too too much like a Dakota anyway he said that was like 18,000 something like that but yeah yeah this is nice And this is nice. I'm starting to be partial to white. <laughs> Maybe because I had a white van, I, I want to replace it with a white pickup, you know? But yeah. Uh, this is like uh, 32,000. Good morning. I am in Flushing, Queens. My old stomping grounds. This is a 2011 F-150 FX4. It has undercoating all the way around, which is really nice. It has new tires. Bottom is awesome, clean everywhere, straight. A few little scratches and stuff. As you can see, it's been undercoated completely. There is some rust on the bottom of the tailgate. It has a liner. Hitch, I think they all come with it. As you can see, there's splashes of the um, undercoating that they put on what do they call that film whatever my friend scott keller is always telling me you should film your bottom of your carbs to prevent rust there's no rust on this truck it's nice i like it a lot um i just test drove it actually with the owner uh guy had no oil in the engine because when i was driving it it had a low oil pressure warning ac while he said it worked it didn't work while we were here it also has a um, brake light warning and a traction control warning on the dash. When I put my OBD2 uh, diagnostic tool onto it, it said no codes. 
but I do have a lot of uh, lights on the dash. Like I said, traction control and brake. Also the um, high beam light switch is wonky. It's like off its thing, it works, but it, it's wonky. Um, he put new brakes in it, the mechanic did, and he broke the brake sensor. So that's why the brake light is on. But then there's also the traction control light on too. There is evidence that this car was uh, had front front damage, as you can see the overspray. That's the evidence right there that it was hit in the front at one time, maybe minor. But all in all, this truck is straight. Really nice truck. He wanted 13.9 for it. I offered him 10. He said yes. We then went for a test drive is when I saw the oil, low oil engine light on. So then I told him, I said, look, the AC doesn't work. You got some rust around the tailgate. You got this oil problem. I checked the dipstick, there's no oil in it. And I don't know how long he's, you know, he went with no oil. So that worries me. Uh, I did rev the engine from 3,500 to 4,000 RPM and listened carefully to the engine and it was smooth and sound. I drove it, it drives like new. I really liked it, but there's just so many problems with it that I just didn't feel good about buying it today. I told him he can call me back uh, once he takes this to a mechanic. And that way I can feel a little bit more warm and fuzzy about it. But uh, I almost feel like I don't want to go see any other cars because this, this is the bar, you know? I was about to give him the money for this, but with that uh, no oil in it, really worried me. So uh, back to the drawing board. Okay, Andy and I just came over here to East Meadow. We saw this uh, 20, I forget what year, but it's a King Ranch, fully loaded. Uh, 2013 has 157,000 miles on it. He wouldn't budge. When I first saw the listing, I was impressed because it was immaculate, just beautiful, you know? Uh, seeing it, it's dirty. He, you know, obviously people are using it right now, so. Uh, it doesn't look as immaculate as the pictures, but uh, I took a test drive with it with a guy and uh, it drove pretty well. They had no codes, no errors. Um, it, and it drove well, but there is some significant rust under the rocker panels uh, right above the uh, running boards. It had a little bit of rust where there's always rust where you open the tailgate right along the hinges on the that meets the bed. But there's always water there, so it's always going to be rusty there. Uh, it has a speed controller, not speed controller, a brake auto controller for if you tow things with it, you know, like the trailer. I don't need that. Uh, it has a good sound system in it, backup camera, all that stuff. It's a King Ranch, so it's got sunroof and everything, leather, uh, cowhide, whatever it is. But uh, it has 157,000 miles. So I'll be actually paying, and he wanted 15.7, and he wouldn't budge you know, much at all, maybe a hundred bucks or something like that. So, you know, he's not willing to budge. He knows what he has. Uh, I personally didn't really like it as much as the first white one, but um, ah, you know what? The search continues, right? No rush. So I'm gonna cut this video now. Uh, I just got back from that last white one, the King Ranch. While it was nice, it's still uh, nine years old, right? So the King Ranch has that cowhide seats the brown leather stitch seats, which are really nice. But after eight years, there are cracks in it. And so it's a dark brown, so it the cracks appear more visibly. You could see them visibly. Uh, it was dirty when I saw it. You know, usually people that show trucks, they want to have it immaculate so that it looks like it's a new car. Uh, I test drove it, it drove nice. Um, but honestly, I look at the one before that. You know, for 10,000, I felt that truck was in better condition. But there was a lot of unknowns with that car because that guy didn't know what the hell he was doing. He had no idea about anything. It's like he bought the truck and all he did was stick the key in and and he went to a bunch of really bad mechanics because they, they messed up his brakes. Um, whatever guy he took that truck to go get an oil change didn't know what the hell he was doing because when, I, when me and Andy checked the oil, there was no oil in it. So... That, that worried me because I, while we tested the engine and it sounded great, I test drove it, it was fine, it's a sound engine. You know, you rev up the RPMs to about 3,500, 4,000 RPM, and you listen carefully to the engine to see if you hear any knocks. 
if it knocks, it means that the we, uh, the engine bearings are going, you know. But it sounded sound to me, so I liked it. I was, I made him an offer. I said I'll give you. He wanted uh, 13, 13, 6 or thirteen nine for it. I, I said ten grand with all the problems that it has. Take it off your hands. But when I checked the oil, it had no oil in it. So that worried me a lot. How long was he driving that car without any oil in it? You know what I mean? Yeah, there is some oil on the bottom that doesn't show up on the dipstick and that splashes around. But I don't know. I, it just didn't give me a good feeling about it. So I walked away from that deal. But I told the guy, if you fix some of the brake lights and the uh, traction control warning lights and go get an oil change at Jiffy Lube or a mechanic and they tell you everything's okay, then maybe I'll revisit it again and maybe offer him a little bit more money for the money he put into it to get it fixed, you know? Also, the AC didn't work. So if it's a compressor, that's a lot of money right there to fix, which I wouldn't do because I don't know how to do it, right? I mean, I guess I could, but I don't want to, right? Uh, so that was another expense I was thinking of. So it had some issues that I didn't want to deal with. Uh, I'd rather just, if that truck was perfect the way it was, I would have bought it for sure but it had too many issues with it. So a week's worth of looking for a truck. I'm still nowhere near finding what I needed. However, I have a better idea now of what I'm looking for, what I could have gotten for X amount of miles. Also, the last one I looked at, the King Ranch, it had 157,000 miles, 60,000 miles more than the other white truck, the one that had the issues. So all in all, I was balancing it, and it's like, you know, he wouldn't budge. The guy with the King Ranch, you know, I offered him 13 He would only go down a couple hundred bucks to fifteen five. So I wasn't willing to spend fifteen five with a car that had 60,000 miles more than the one I could have got for $10,000. miles, uh, $10, you know what I mean? So back to the drawing board. I'm going to keep looking. I'll have a video showing me finding whatever from this date on and hopefully buying a truck and driving it home and showing you guys what the new mowers and blowers transport vehicle looks like. Thanks a lot for joining me today, guys. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, I'm Andy from Jericho. See, see you guys, guys next, next time on Mowers and Blowers. Blowers.